Hello dear students, in this video I will continue with the 7th unit financial mathematics. In this video we will learn about nominal and effective rate of interest. The formula to calculate the effective rate of interest when the nominal rate of interest is given. We will also see the questions from exercise 7.4 of CBSE handbook. So first we will see what is nominal rate of interest and what is effective rate of interest. The nominal rate of interest, it is the announced or the stated rate of interest which is given by any financial institution. And next we have the effective rate of interest. Effective rate of interest, it is the actual rate by which the money grows during each year. It is called effective rate of interest. If the nominal rate of interest, if it is compounded annually, then the nominal rate of interest will be equal to the effective rate, rate of interest. On the other hand, if the rate of interest is compounded monthly or semi-annually or continuously then the effective rate of interest will change. So we have a few formulae to find the effective rate of interest when the nominal rate of interest is compounded for some periods of time. Now we will see the relation between effective rate of interest and nominal rate of interest. So let us take let R be the nominal rate of interest which is compounded M times in a year and let R effective be the effective rate of interest. Here we have the nominal rate of interest R which is compounded M times in a year. So the rate per period I it will be given by R by M. R by M. Say for example, if R, the nominal rate of interest, if it is compounded semi-annually, then we will write I as R by 2. On the other hand, if we have R, the nominal rate of interest, if it is compounded monthly, then we used to write R I as I is equal to R upon 12. So here we are considering this nominal rate of interest, it is compounded M times in a year. So, we have the rate per period I as R by M. Then the principal P, if we take this P as the principal, it amounts in one year to P into 1 plus R by M the whole raise to M. So, this much will be the amount at the end of a year if we have the principal as since an effective rate is the actual rate compounded annually, so if R effective is the effective rate, then the principal P amounts in one year to P into 1 plus R effective. And now these two amount will be equal. These two will be equal. If we take this as 1 and this as 2, 1 and 2 implies P into 1 plus R effective equal to P into 1 plus R by M the whole raise to M. Now these two will get cancelled. From this we get 1 plus R effective equal to 1 plus R by M the whole raise to M. Or we have effective rate of interest as 1 plus R by M the whole raise to M minus 1. And now if we take the case when this nominal rate of interest if it is compounded continuously then we have to apply limits and we get the effective rate of interest as R effective is equal to E raised to R minus 1. So these are the formula that we have to remember as far as nominal and effective rate of interest is concerned. So we will see those two formulae again. R effective is given by 1 plus R by M the whole raised to M minus 1 where R effective is the effective rate of interest. This R is the nominal rate of interest and M is the number of conversion periods per year. In case of continuous compounding of nominal rate, the effective rate of interest is given by E raised to R minus 1 where this is effective rate of interest and this R is nominal rate of interest. Here the value of this E is 2.718. E equal to 2.718.
Now, having seen the formula for effective rate of interest, we will see the questions from exercise 7.4. The first question, what is the effective annual rate of interest compounding equivalent to a nominal rate of interest 5% per annum compounded quarterly? So, here we need to find the effective rate of interest which is equivalent to a nominal rate of interest of 5% per annum which is compounded this quarterly. So, here the nominal rate of interest R is 5%, M is the number of conversion periods per year. In one year, we have 4 quarters, so M is 4. So, we have R as 5%, it is 0 0.05, M is 4. Now, we have the formula. We have R effective equal to 1 plus R by M, the whole raised to M minus 1. So, it is 1 plus 0 0.05 by 4 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. So, it is 1 plus 0 0.0125 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. 1.0125 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. The value of 1.0125 the whole raised to 4 is 1.0509. So, this is 1.0509 minus 1. So, R effective equal to 0 0.0509 or it is equal to 5.09 percent. So, 5.09 effective rate of interest is 5.09 percent which is equivalent to a nominal rate of interest of 5 percent per annum compounded quarterly. So, similar question can be expected for 2 marks. The last year sample paper, similar question was asked for 2 marks. Writing the formula carries 1 mark. Substituting the values and getting the final answer carries 1 mark. Next question, which is the better investment 3% per year compounded monthly or 3.1% per year compounded quarterly? So, we have 2 different investment options. We have to find the effective rate of interest and that option which has a higher effective rate of interest will be a better investment. So, we have when compounded monthly, the nominal rate is 3 percent or it is equal to 0 0.03 and M is the number of conversion periods per year, it is compounded monthly. So, M is 12. So, using the formula R effective equal to 1 plus R by M, the whole raised to M minus 1. It is 1 plus 0 0.03 by 12, the whole raised to 12 minus 1. Or it is 1 plus 0 0.0025, the whole raised to 12 minus 1. 1 1.0025, the whole raised to 12 minus 1. The value for 1.0025 the whole raised to 12 is 1.0304. It is 1.0304 minus 1 or it is 0 0.0304. This 0 0.0304 is nothing but 3.04 percent into 100 percent. So, it is 3.04 percent. So, this is the effective rate of interest when 3 percent is compounded monthly. And now when we have the investment option which is compounded quarterly, we have R as 3.1 percent. R is 3.1 percent or it is 0 0.031. It is compounded quarterly, so the number of conversion periods per year it will be 4. Now R effective equal to 1 plus 0 0.031 upon 4, the whole raised to 4 minus 1. The formula is here using R as 3.1 percent and M as 4. We have effective rate of interest as 1 plus 0 0.031 by 4 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. It is 1 plus 0 0.00775 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. Now 1.00775 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. The value is given 1.03136. It is 1.03136 minus 1 or it is 0 
3.36. This is into 100 percent. So, it is 3.136 percent. When we compare these two cases, here 3.1 percent compounded quarterly, the effective rate of interest is more. So, this is a better option. Three point one per cent per annum compounded quarterly is better. Is a better investment. Since the effective rate of interest is more in this case. Next question, what effective rate of interest is equivalent to a nominal rate of 8% converted quarterly? So, here again it is very easy. R is 8% or it is 0 0.08. Number of conversion periods per year, it is converted quarterly. So, M is 4. One year has got 4 quarters. The formula is R effective equal to 1 plus R by M the whole raised to M minus 1. It is 1 plus 0 0.08 by 4 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. It is 1 plus 0 0.02 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. 1 1.02 the whole raised to 4 minus 1. 1 1.02 the whole raised to 4 is 1.0824. So, it is 1.0824 minus 1 or it is 0 0.0824. It is into 100 percent if you want to convert it into percentage. So, the effective rate of interest is 8.24 percent. So, this is the effective rate of interest which is equivalent to a nominal rate of 8 percent that is converted quarterly. Next, we have to what amount will rupees 12,000 accumulate in 12 years if invested at an effective rate of 5%. So, here we have to use the formula that we have studied in our earlier classes. Amount A equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 the whole raised to N. So, using that formula we can find the amount. So, first let us write what is given. P is... 12,000, N is 12 years, R is 5 percent or it is 5 by 100 which is 0 0.05. So, we have amount A is equal to, this is R effective, P into 1 plus R effective the whole raised to n. P is 12,000 into 1 plus. Here I have already divided by 100 and 5 percent is 0 0.05. So, it is 0 0.05 the whole raised to 12. So, 12,000 into 1.05 the whole raised to 12. The value of 1.05 the whole raised to 12 is 1.7958. So, it is 12,000 into 1.7958. Now, this when we simplify, we get it as 21,549.6. Therefore, A equal to rupees 21,549.6. So, this much is the amount that will accumulate in 12 years if it is invested at an effective rate of 5 percent. Next question, which yields more interest, 8 percent effective or 7.8 percent compounded semi-annually? So, here this is the, there is one investment whose effective rate is directly given, it is 8 percent and there is another investment whose nominal rate is 7.8 percent and it is compounded semi-annually. So, for this part alone, let us find the effective rate and compare the effective rate of this option and this option. So, at 8 percent effective, we have the effective rate of interest as 8 percent itself. 
when compounded semi annually we have the nominal rate r as 7.8% it is 0 0.078 and m is the number of conversion periods per year it is compounded semi annually so m will be 2 now using the formula r effective equal to 1 plus r by m the whole raised to m minus 1 it is 1 plus 0 0.078 upon 2 the whole square minus 1. So, it is 1 plus 0 0.039 the whole square minus 1. Our effective will be 1.039 the whole square minus 1. Since here it is 1.039 the whole square we can multiply and we can find the square of this number. When we find the square, we get it as approximately 1.0795 minus 1 or it is 0 0.0795 which is 7.95 percent. So, for the first one, we have effective rate of interest is 8 percent and for the second investment, the interest is 7.95 percent. When we compare these two, this one yields more interest. Therefore, 8% effective yields more interest. So, these are the various exercise questions from exercise 7.4. Since we do not have a question where we have to find the effective rate of interest when it is compounded continuously, I have taken the example question. Mr. Y has two investment options, either a 10% per annum compounded semi-annually or 9.5% per annum compounded continuously. Which option is preferable and why? So, here we have two options. The first option is 10% per annum compounded semi-annually and the other option is 9.5% per annum compounded continuously. In both cases, we have to find the effective rate of interest and in which option the effective rate of interest is more, that option will be more, that option will be preferable. So, when compounded semi-annually, we have R as 10%. 0.1 and it is compounded semi annually. So, the number of conversion periods m will be 2. Effective rate of interest is calculated as 1 plus r by m the whole raised to m minus 1. So, it is 1 plus 0.1 by 2 the whole square minus 1. It is 1 plus 0 0.05 the whole square minus 1. It is 1.05 the whole square minus 1. So, this 1.05 the whole square, it is nothing but 1.1025 minus 1. So, it is 0 0.1025. If you want to write it in percentage, it is into 100. So, 10.25 percent. So, in this case, the effective rate of interest is 10.25 percent and then uh, next option is 9.5 percent per annum compounded continuously. So, when compounded continuously we have R as 9.5 percent or it is 0 0.095. When the nominal rate of interest is compounded continuously then the formula for calculating effective rate is E raised to R minus 1. So, e raised to 0 0.095 minus 1. The value for e raised to 0 0.095 is 1.0996. It is 1.0996 minus 1. It is 0 0.0996. If we want to have it in percentage, it is into 100, 9.96 percent. So, when we compare these two options, in this option, the effective rate of interest is more. Since 10.25 percent 
is more 10% per annum compounded semi annually this option this option is preferable semi annually is preferable so this option is preferable because the effective rate of interest is more so far we have seen problems where we have to find the effective rate of interest when the num the nominal rate of interest is given and the number of compounding periods is given now if we have a situation where no compounding is done when there is no compounding done then the number of conversion periods per year it will be equal to 1 that is m will be equal to 1 in that case the effective rate of interest will be equal to the nominal rate of interest when m is 1 then we have r effective will be 1 plus r by 1 the whole raised to 1 minus 1 so it will be 1 plus r minus 1 it will be equal to r so we will get r effective equal to the nominal rate of interest so we have we will have a different value for effective rate of interest and nominal rate of interest only when the nominal rate of interest is compounded for certain certain periods if no compounding is given or if no compounding is done then the effective rate of interest will be equal to the nominal rate of interest a question based on this was asked in assertion reason in the sample paper. So, I thought it will be useful if this information is known. I hope this video was useful for you. In my next video, I will continue with financial mathematics, the next topic, which is compound annual growth rate. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.